Hello and welcome. My name is Kaushik Raj Chaudhary and today I will tell you how to create a um, web API project using ASP.NET Web API 2 technology. So in this tutorial you will use ASP.NET Web API to create a web API that returns a list of products and the front end web API web page uses jQuery to display the results. So you have to start Visual Studio. And let it um, load. So the Visual Studio is loaded. So click on File, click on New Project, and uh, I have selected under Visual C Sharp Node the web and uh, highlighted ASP.NET web application.NET framework and then I'll give it a suitable name and that name is products app products app and click on OK And on this new ASP.NET Web Application Products App dialog, I will um, keep it highlighted on the empty template and with add folders and co-reference for Web API and click OK to start building the project. taking a wee while so we'll wait for th this to create the project on the Visual Studio. Now the project products app has built and I will add a model. Now model is an object that represents the data in your application. ASP.NET Web API can automatically serialize your model to JSON, XML or some other format and then write the serialized data into the body of the HTTP response message. As long as a client can read the serialization format, it can deserialize the object. Most clients can pass either the XML or JSON. Moreover, the client can indicate which format it wants by setting the accept header in the HTTP request message. So, my solution explorer is visible on the right hand pane and in the solution explorer I will right click the models folder and add a class, add a class and name this class as product. This is my product class. So this is product app dot models namespace, and I have my code already written for the sake of cutting short the time in um, writing the code. So I have written my product class. And now I will add a controller. So in the web API, a controller is an object that handles the HTTP requests. We'll add a controller that can return either a list of products or a single product specified by an ID. So I guess if you have already used ASP.NET MVC, you are already familiar with controllers. Web API controllers are similar to MVC controllers, but inherit the API controller class instead of the customary controller class in case of uh, the normal MVC controller. So in the solution explorer right click the controllers folder and 
click on add and click on controllers in the add scaffold dialog select web api controller empty click on add and i will name the controller as products controllers so products controller Now this action, which is known as scaffolding, it creates a file name productscontroller.cs in the controllers folder, within the controllers folder. So I will, this file is already open for me. So I will just have this code which is already in my notepad and I will paste this code. You may choose to write the code if you'd like to. And I need to use a using statement product apps dot models because I need to import from the models folder the product using product app dot models will actually get rid of all these red squiggly lines. To keep the example simple products are stored in a fixed array inside here I am not using any database so products are stored in a fixed array inside the controller class. Of course in a real application you would query a database or use some other external data source. Now by default you'll see that you know this uh, Controller class defines two action, two methods which are get all products and get product with an ID. So get all product method returns the entire list of products as an I enumerable product type and the get product method looks up a single product by its ID. That is this. That's it. So you have a working web API. Each method on the controller corresponds to one or more URIs. So get product is corresponding to um, front slash api slash product slash id and get all products correspond to front slash api slash products so for your purpose i will write down here as a statement an extra curly so and get product corresponds to URI right now for let me build the project once to see if everything is going all right my next step will be calling the web api with javascript and jquery so this section add an html page that uses ajax to call the web api we'll use jquery to make the ajax calls and also to update the page with the results so in the solution explorer I see my build has succeeded so everything is fine so far so right click add on the product app um, project and select new item new item so in the add new item dialog I'll select web and an HTML page and name this page as index.html so index.html 
So index.html page is open for me. Here I will paste the code which I have already got in a notepad. So I will just highlight just highlight my entire thing and copy it with my code which is from top to bottom. Right. So now there are several ways to get jQuery. So I have used the Microsoft Ajax CDN content delivery network. So this is the CDN for Ajax that I have used Microsoft Ajax CDN and I'll just save this index file. Now the next step is to get a list of products. To get a list of products send an HTTP GET request to front slash API slash products. Now the jQuery GET JSON no, GET JSON method this function rather this is a function sends an ajax request for response containing an array of json objects the done function the done function this is the done function specifies a callback that is called if the request succeeds in the callback we update the dom with the product information so i am this is the dom list item object I am updating the product information to get a product by ID we send an HTTP get request to front slash API slash product slash ID where ID is the product ID so here it is function find so that's what I just said to get a product by ID send an HTTP GET request to this URI where ID is the product ID. We still call GET JSON. So we are still calling GET JSON to send the AJAX request but this time we put the ID in the request URI. That's the difference. Please note it down. The response from this request is a JSON representation of a single product. Now I will run the application. My application is ready to run. I will press F5 to run this application. So the application is now building. It will take a wee while before the application runs. And I have got the screen. So to get a product by ID, enter the ID and it click search. So if I click on to click on search, so I get yo-yo. If I click one, I should get tomato soup. Then low, I got tomato soup. So if I now try with some ID which is not there, I'll come up with error not found. Now, when we are working with an HTTP service, it can be very useful to see the HTTP request and request messages. You can do this by using the F12 developer tools in Internet Explorer 9 or this is actually running from I'll stop the application. I'll just go to Internet Explorer 
I'll run the application again. And this time, I'll click on F12 to get the DOM Explorer debugger and uh, now I'll go to the web page and click F5 so this is reloading the page and it will capture the HTTP traffic between the browser and the web server. So this is the summary view. So you can fit etc. That's it. Thank you very much.